Guys, I've had a lot of fun lately making videos like the top 10 fighting games of all time, but whenever I do a ranking like that, I always do one game per series so that I don't just clog up the whole list with games from the same series. But today, we're breaking that rule. We're doing a video that's all Street Fighter. I'm going to be ranking every game in the Street Fighter series. I got the tier maker pulled up. You guys know it's always going to be a good video when we're looking at tier maker and I'm going to be ranking every single Street Fighter game from the all time goats down to the games that I don't think that you should bother with. You may see I, I have the EX games here and haven't played. I've only played these like once or twice. Uh, I would like to give them a try. I don't think there's like a good way to play them right now. They're not on Fightcade or anything, but if you guys think I should do a video about the EX games, giving them an earnest try, uh, let me know down in the comments. And if you like this type of ranking content, I would really appreciate it if you could hit the like button. It makes a huge difference. It's just a simple thing to just click it and it really helps out, gets the video shown to more people and lets me know that this is the type of content you want to see more of. But let's get started. We're going to be going through in chronological order, starting with the very first Street Fighter 2. For some reason, Street Fighter 1 is not on this uh <laughs> on this tier maker but it's street fighter one is a don't bother street fighter one is like unplayable maybe just try it out just to see how bad it is by today's standards but don't bother with street fighter one and street fighter two the world warrior the first version of street fighter two i'm gonna make some of you mad i'm gonna say don't bother with this one either to be honest all right so the very first version of street fighter two obviously this game paved the way for everything that was gonna come after, but I just think by today's standards, you'd be better off playing basically any of the other versions of Street Fighter 2 that came after this version. It has so many problems. Uh, the balance is really, really bad. A lot of characters can kill you off one touch really easily. There's lots of instant dizzy and instant re-dizzy combos and stuff like that. There's also the problem that there's only eight characters and you and your opponent can't pick the same character. So if you both want to play Ryu or whatever, whoever gets there first is the only one that can play the character. So that's kind of a problem. And uh, I just don't recommend going back to the World Warrior unless you're just curious about how far the series has come. Then as a follow up to the World Warrior, Capcom released Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. And I think I'm going to say that this one is worth trying. So this game, you know, they let you play as the four boss characters. They added the ability to have a mirror match. So they really fixed uh, two of the major problems with the World Warrior. They also added new moves for the various characters. And just in general, this is a solid entry of Street Fighter 2. Not the best. It does have some issues with balance, especially. But overall, I think you can have a lot of fun with it, even if it might feel a little bit slow to go back to after playing some of the later games. One of those later games being Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting, which I'm going to go ahead and say is seriously good. So unlike Champion Edition, this game is very fast. Going back to this, it, it feels crazy the jump between the older versions of Street Fighter 2 and this one. That's why it's called Street Fighter 2 Turbo. So I think the speed makes it fun. Also, lots of characters got new moves in this game, so they'll feel a little bit closer to the versions you might know from the later games with more moves added in so this is probably the second most played version of street fighter 2 in tournaments uh after you know one of the games we'll talk about in just a little bit so i think this is a solid little entry that is a lot of fun and holds up to this day even though it's missing some major things like super bars and throw softening uh still a fun game and then the follow-up to this kind of a weird one was super street fighter 2 the new challengers i'm gonna say this is worth trying so this game was definitely a big step up in terms of the look, all the menus, all the character portraits and stuff like that. Uh, look a lot better in this game, even though it's using all the same stages and sprites from the previous games. So obviously this game brought in the new challengers, hence the name Fei Long, Kami, DJ, T-Hawk. So we got new characters in this. Um, but one weird thing about it is it kind of is a little slower if you're used to the speed of Super Turbo. Going back to this uh, might feel a little bit weird to you, but overall it's a solid entry. It's not most people's favorites, and I think that it's just kind of in this weird place where if people really like the old school feel, they tend to go with Street Fighter 2 Turbo, and if they like the newer school crazy over the top version, they'll go with the next game on our list, which is of course Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. And I'm gonna go ahead and say this is an all-time GOAT. 
Okay, Super Turbo. Everybody loves this game, right? So this game, they cranked up the speed to like a million. This game is so lightning fast. They gave characters a ton of new moves. And of course, most notably, they gave every character a super. So that added a lot of fun and interest to the game. There's also selectable versions of the character. In this game, you can pick the sort of super turbo version or just the super version who doesn't have a... Uh, super meter and has a few balance changes so the roster feels really big because you have multiple options of how you want to play your character this is by far the most played version of street fighter 2 in tournaments because it is so exciting it's so dynamic it's so crazy this is really a robbery game like the balance in this game is kind of atrocious but at the same time to a degree it feels like every character can compete even the low tiers uh can blow you up because it only takes one or two hits to just stun the enemy and completely destroy them so it's an unforgiving game but it's so fast and so fun and I think that there's a good reason why Super Turbo is still so beloved to this day all right that gets us through all the versions of Street Fighter 2 by the way I didn't mention this these are gonna be ordered tiers so the games on the left side of the tier I'm gonna say I like a little bit more it's close between champion edition and super I think I'll give it to champion edition just because I feel like it's more unique Super Street Fighter 2 just feels like Super Turbo with some of the fun missing where Champion Edition is kind of an experience that you can't really replicate with either of these games. So anyway, that's it for Street Fighter 2. Let's jump into Street Fighter Alpha. I think I'm going to say Street Fighter Alpha 1 is worth trying. So Alpha 1, I think one of the things that might make it hard to go back to if you're used to 2 or 3, it has a very small roster, only 10 characters. And uh, it doesn't really have some of the gimmicks that we came to love in the later alpha versions, like custom combos and stuff like that. Uh, it's still overall a pretty fun game. They did introduce some new stuff that wasn't in Street Fighter 2, like air blocking. Um, and it has a very interesting combo system as well. You can actually combo between your normals very easily in a way that's not allowed in the later versions of the alpha series. So I think maybe if you're looking for something new to try out, check out Alpha 1, but in general, it is highly overshadowed by its follow-ups, and this sees, like, basically no play anymore, but it's so different that you might want to at least try it out once and see how it plays. Next up is Street Fighter Alpha 2, and I think there is an argument for Alpha 2 being an all-time GOAT, but for me personally, I'm gonna put it in seriously good. This is an amazing game. I'm actually gonna put it to the left of Hyper Fighting. Uh, it's a very, very good game by today's standards. If you like that classic Street Fighter 2 style gameplay, this game has quite a lot to offer with some new twists. So they got rid of the combo system from Alpha 1. Now you're only going to be able to chain your light normals, which is a lot more similar to how it works in later games. But something they introduced in this game that is very interesting is the custom combo system. So you can spend however much meter you have to go into a state where all your stuff is going to combo together. And this adds a lot of excitement and interest to the game but it also adds a little bit of brokenness to the game let's just say there are things like custom combo blowbacks as well as the Valle custom combo unblockable which can make the game kind of crazy and feel like uh, things are a bit out of your control at certain points but overall if you like the classic fundamentals style of Street Fighter gameplay Alpha 2 is a really amazing game and it's fast have you guys noticed I, I seem to like fast games this game is so fast man I'm telling you so uh, yeah love Alpha 2 it's seriously an amazing game and you might be thinking that alpha 3 is next but actually if you go chronologically street fighter 3 new generation came out before alpha 3 and uh i'm gonna go ahead and say don't bother with new generation i'm sorry so street fighter 3 the new generation it feels kind of weird to go back to this one if you're used to third strike or some of the later games uh first of all the roster is very small a lot of your favorite characters might be missing in this game like chun li isn't even in this game there's only 11 characters but yun and yang are actually clones in this game they're completely identical unlike in the later version so really there's more like 10 characters in the game um this game also doesn't have EX moves, which feels super weird, so it just feels like it's missing a lot if you're used to the later games. And some of the things that make Third Strike so much fun, like parrying, parrying is super jank in this game and there's no red parrying either, so it's just kind of a weird one to go back to and really I don't see any reason to play it. 
uh, compared to some of the later games on the list. Actually, I, I am going to move it over because I do think it's it's better than World Warrior. At least you and the opponent can pick the same character, so it has that advantage over World Warrior. But anyway, so then after that, they released Street Fighter 3 Second Impact Giant Attack. What a title <laughs> and what a game. You know, I'm, I'm borderline on this one. I, it's almost seriously good, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and put it at the top of worth trying. One thing that is seriously good about this game is the look. Uh, a lot of people have argued that this game looks better than Third Strike, which I think might be true. At least the, the backgrounds in this game are a lot more sort of old school looking and a lot more like animated looking than Third Strike, which kind of has those weird like pre-rendered backgrounds. So the look and, and the sound as well. Personally, I think I prefer the Third Strike soundtrack, but they both have merit. The soundtrack in this game is very excellent as well. So those aspects of the game are really amazing. They also fixed a lot of the problems with new generation. They added a ton of new characters like Akuma, you can see on screen here, as well as like Yurian and uh, Hugo as well. Lots of uh, beloved characters from the Street Fighter 3 series were introduced in this game. This game also introduced EX attacks. Uh, so in general, I just feel like they did a lot to make this feel more like a complete game than New Generations, which feels a little bit unfinished. Oh, I'm so sad he missed the parry there. That would have been so sick. <laughs> but anyway, the fun is there in this game. The balance is a little jank, but obviously the balance is a little jank in Third Strike as well. I just, uh, for me, I think the pairing system in Third Strike feels a little bit better. Uh, and overall, Third Strike, I think, is the more solid game. We'll talk about that in a second. But Second Impact is a lot more fun than you might think. And it's definitely worth going back to and checking out if you never have before. But before we get to the follow-up to Second Impact, we must, of course, talk about Alpha 3. So Alpha 3, I'm going to make everybody mad by putting it one slot <laughs> below Alpha 2. But Alpha 3 is a pretty crazy cool game. So in terms of, like, features and content this game is pretty incredible look at the size of that roster they almost doubled the amount of characters from alpha 2 and they gave every character a selectable ism v ism x ism and uh a ism to choose kind of what their meter does so you know a and x are maybe closer to the more traditional street fighter that you're used to whereas v ism is a custom combo system similar to what we saw in alpha 2 with the custom combo so uh, this game is pretty cool. I mean, it, it introduced some new things that have carried over, like two-button throwing. It's no longer like the one-button like option select throw that we're used to. It also introduced teching, like where you can recover out of attacks in midair. So that's a unique system that you don't see very often in Street Fighter. The game also feels very fast and fluid. Really, the only major issue with the game is probably just how crazy Vism is. Vism is at high level play a pretty ridiculous mechanic. You can do all kinds of nonsense with it like really long combos, even infinites on some characters. Yes, it's really hard to do. Yes, there are ways to counter Vism, but overall it's just like a very game warping mechanic that I understand a lot of players might not want to open themselves up to a situation where they're going to where they're going to have to sit there and watch like a really long juggle combo. So Vism is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but overall Alpha 3, very cool game. Fun fact, this is Daigo's favorite Street Fighter. At least he said that in an interview once and everyone's been running with it. So uh, very cool game. Personally, I prefer Alpha 2, but it's very, very close. They're both amazing, excellent games. But now we're getting to the big boy here. I built this game up enough. You guys know Third Strike the Goat. I'm even putting it above Super Turbo because I really think it is that good. This game is seriously just firing on all cylinders from the look, the beautiful animation of the characters, as well as the new characters they added to the game, I think are all really incredible. And some of the best looking characters in Third Strike are the new characters that were added, as well as the soundtrack. The soundtrack is so perfect in this game. It To me, it just fits the mood of the game so well. And in general, the way that you can really just make this game your own, you can express yourself 
so much between your character choice, your super choice, your play style, the way that you utilize the parry system. Parries in this game are just mwah, so perfect. It feels so good to land. And, uh, you know, the balance in this game is obviously, like, really bad. Chun-Li and Yun are so overpowered, and there's some really bad characters as well. But I feel like because of the parry system and because, you know, every character has so many little ways that you can farm out these little edges over your opponent and get those hits that you need, uh, anyone can be viable in this game if you put in enough work. So Third Strike, it's such a beautiful game. It's so fun to watch and it's just as fun to play. I would say it's probably my favorite Street Fighter game, not to spoil the list too much, but if you guys have seen my other videos, you've probably heard me talk about that. So uh, yeah, this wasn't a game that I loved when I first tried it. It took a lot of time for me to really understand what makes it so different and special. And uh, yeah, I'll stop talking about it. I'm sure everyone's tired of hearing about how good Third Strike is, but you know, there it is. Street Fighter 3, Third Strike, one of the goats. All right, now we're getting into what I would call maybe the modern era of Street Fighter, starting in 2008 with Vanilla Street Fighter 4. Uh, I'm gonna say this one's worth trying. Asterisk. So the asterisk here is mainly that this game is a little bit broken. The vanilla version of Street Fighter 4 uh, had some crazy stuff. Like, first of all, a lot of characters' ultras do like 50, 55, 60% if fully charged, so ultras were a really imbalanced mechanic and characters with good ultras tended to be massively stronger than characters with bad ultras. There was also a glitch that allowed ultras to become unblockable. This wasn't really fully explored until after Super Street Fighter 4 had come out, but if we continued to play this version, it would probably stop being fun pretty fast because you would just get hit by unblockable ultras on wake up all the time, which was not very fun. Also, DP FADC was so degenerate in this game it was safe on block. A lot of characters like Ken and Akuma could hit confirm their FADC so that they only spend the two meters if they need to do it if it was blocked. So uh, yeah, this game was very imbalanced. It was very broken in a lot of ways, but it was so much fun too. You know, the craziness I think added to the appeal a little bit and this was just what people were waiting for after such a long gap after Third Strike had come out. So uh, Vanilla Street Fighter 4 holds a very special place in my heart despite all the flaws. And then the follow-up, the first follow-up to Street Fighter 4 was Super Street Fighter 4. And I'm gonna say that it's seriously good. I think I would maybe put it last in seriously good. Also, let me move. I think I'm gonna put Street Fighter 4 below second impact here on Worth Trying. I, I'm, I'm so used to not doing ordered tier lists that I always forget that I have to actually pay attention to where I put them. But Super Street Fighter 4 was a pretty great follow-up, to be honest. So this game introduced selectable ultras, which was a very big deal that opened up the game a lot, especially characters who had really weak ultras. A lot of them became much more viable uh, because now they had a second ultra to choose from that might be a lot better. Um, also, this game fixed a lot of the balanced issues. It toned down a lot of the stuff that was really crazy and broken. And something interesting, just kind of in like a meta sense, is that we got to see a lot of characters who haven't been that good in other Street Fighter 4 versions be really good in this. Characters like Guile was really amazing in this one. Uh, M. Bison was really amazing. Abel was really, really good. Abel was good in vanilla as well. So he, he's had some shine in various versions, but the, the meta of this game I thought was really interesting and unique. Whereas in a lot of the other versions of Street Fighter 4, you saw a lot of the same characters rising to the top, like Evil Ryu, Yun was good in multiple versions. Sagat was good in multiple versions. So, uh, and Seth, of course, Seth was really good in a lot of versions. So anyway, Super, I found to be a very interesting version. There weren't too many big problems with it. Unlike the first one, they fixed a lot of the major issues, and uh, I think it still holds up. Fun one to go back to here. And then after Super, they decided to go a little bit crazy with it, and they released Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition, which I think is worth trying. I think I'm going to put it last on the worth trying list. I don't really see like a good reason to play it these days, but it is kind of funny. So probably the most known thing about Arcade Edition was this was the game where the twins were very problematic. Yun and Yang were generally considered the best characters in this version, and they were insanely good. Everybody was switching to Yun because he was so ridiculously powerful. He had so much. He had the plus on block EX rush punch. That was just too much combined with the dive kicks and everything, and, you know, being able to combo into Ultra 
Really insane character, but uh, there were a lot of other very interesting top tiers as well. Fei Long was considered top tier. Sea Viper was really high up there. Uh, so you did see some other characters, but in general, the twins were really holding things down. So it's kind of funny to go back to this one and just see like how crazy powerful they decided to make these characters pretty much just for fun. Didn't they out and say that they made them overpowered on purpose? I think they might have said that or something like that in an interview. So it is kind of funny to go back and see that, but there's not too much reason to be playing this other than, you know, just the humor factor of how imbalanced it is. And then we got AE 2012, which was kind of like the hot fix to, to fix the twins. And I really don't remember very much about this version. I guess I'll put it in worth trying. I All I really remember about this is this was the one where Hakan was like kind of good. Didn't they buff Hakan a lot in this version? There was obviously the really famous match at EVO where Infiltration counterpicked PR Balrog with Hakan. So that's like the, the main thing that I honestly remember about this game. Uh, other than that, nothing about it stood out too much. And I think uh, in general, this was kind of just the filler arc of Street Fighter 4 until we came to the final version, which uh, is generally a pretty beloved version. So let's talk about that. Ultra Street Fighter 4, I'm gonna say is seriously good. I think I'm gonna put it right here below Hyper Fighting. Hyper Fighting, you know, oh, it's close. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna put, I'll put it right here. I'll put it above Hyper Fighting, okay? Ultra Street Fighter 4 is a pretty darn good version of Street Fighter 4. So there is kind of one notable problem with Ultra Street Fighter 4, which is Elena. Uh, Lena is kind of a game-breaking character. She is uh, generally considered one of the best, if not the best, characters in the game. Um, and she does shut down some matchups. She's a little bit crazy. She's a little bit unfun to play against. She can slow the pace of the game to a halt. So Elena is a bit of an issue. But other than that, Ultra, I think, is one of the better versions of Street Fighter 4, if not the best version. Other than that one problem, uh, you know, they, they generally shored up the game quite a bit. They fixed a lot of the sort of remaining issues that have kind of bummed people out about Street Fighter 4 and just generally balanced it in such a way that I think it really rewards solid play. There's not as many, like, crazy over-the-top gimmicks and stuff like we saw in AE. And uh, it's a fun one to go back to. If you haven't played Ultra Street Fighter 4 in a while, it'll definitely feel weird to go back to this game after playing 5, but it's definitely still fun. So shout outs to Ultra. If we could just agree that Elena doesn't exist, then this is nearly the perfect Street Fighter game, in my opinion. All right, and here we're coming to the end here with Street Fighter 5. So if we're talking about launch Street Fighter 5, I'm basically going to divide these into this is Street Fighter 5 as it was when it released. And this is Street Fighter V now. So launch Street Fighter V. Don't bother. You know, just don't bother, man. In 2023, there there's nothing appealing about this one anymore. This is kind of a weird comparison because I don't think this game is even like playable in any way anymore. I don't know. Can you like install Street Fighter V from a disc or something with your internet turned off and not get any updates? Is that possible? <laughs> but anyway, of course, one of the biggest problems with this game was the eight frames issue. Eight frames of input delay offline made the game feel very muddy, very swampy to play in. Uh, you know, this was also when every character had one V trigger and one V skill. So you felt a little bit limited in what you could do. And in general, they hadn't really opened up a lot of the possibilities for the characters that were kind of unlocked in later patches and later versions of the game as they uh, sort of continued to buff stuff and give characters new options. So uh, yeah, to me, they just really fumbled the bag on this one, of course, in addition to the problems with the delay and stuff like that and the online having some issues as well. There were the issue of like the game not having any content. <laughs> I know I haven't really talked about like single player content for any of these other games, so maybe it's a little bit unfair, but man, this game shipped in a really half finished state with no arcade mode, no story mode, no no Nathan, man. So uh, yeah, R regular Street Fighter V when it first came out was a major hit to Capcom's reputation that to be honest, they're still kind of trying to recover from. So uh, yeah, this game was kind of a disaster on launch, but let's move on to Street Fighter V as it is now, which I'm gonna say is a seriously good game. I think I might put it above Super Street Fighter IV, but below 
uh, Ultra and Hyper Fighting, I think Street Fighter V is in a pretty good place right now. So now with the Champion Edition update by now, there are so many more characters in Street Fighter V. There's so much more content to play with. Everyone has selectable V skills and V triggers now, which opens up the individual characters quite a bit as well. And just generally with the patching of the game, I think they've done a pretty solid job of dealing with some of people's major criticisms of Street Fighter V, which were things like uh, the characters feel sluggish, they feel limited, it feels like you don't have that many options, there's not that much freedom or room for player expression. I think overall they've done a good job of ameliorating some of those issues. It's not a perfect game you know i think street fighter 4 and street fighter 5 each have their own advantages and disadvantages uh so in some ways i think 5 uh maybe doesn't live up to the lofty street fighter legacy set by 2 and 3 but overall i think it's a very good game uh obviously the the competitive history of this game there have been so many hype moments that have come from it so uh yeah street fighter 5 i think they they are going out on a pretty high note which will hopefully set them up for success with street fighter 6 i mean personally i can't wait for street fighter 6 to come out and see where it places on the old tier list but what do you guys think do you agree or disagree with my ratings i feel like probably the one people are going to be most mad about is alpha 3 i think people might say i put alpha 3 too low or maybe Second Impact too low. I think those might be the games that most upset people. But I'm very curious to hear your own thoughts down in the comments. And uh, yeah, let me know about these EX games. Are, are they are they that good? Never tried them. Never tried them, guys. So uh, yeah, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.